Did you know that you can preview videos without opening them? Or that you can explore the substance presets right within Connector? Keep watching, and you will learn a lot about the intricacies of Connector's smooth interface. In this video, we will cover all the basics of Connector's user interface, so you can feel more familiar with it. In general, the interface is divided into panels, most of which can be turned on and off from the window dropdown at the top. Let's begin with the Folders panel, which is essential for Connector. In there, you add the folders with your assets, which will then be previewed and organized using the app. You should have at least one root folder added to the panel. Apart from the standard browsing of separate folders, Connector offers you the option to show all assets that are within the subfolders. You can also play with the colors to bring a bit of color coding to your folders panel. Next is the place where the magic happens, the assets view. For your viewing pleasure, we will use the custom previews a lot, but in general, Connector is very good at giving you visual information right off the bat. You can quickly go through the custom thumbs. Just hold shift and rotate the mouse wheel. With a middle mouse button, click on a video or audio file and you will be able to preview it without opening it. Another useful interaction in the asset view is the stacking. It allows you to group assets based on their names. It's quite handy for visually decluttering your view, especially if you have many similarly named versions of the same asset. Above the asset view are the main filters. They represent different asset types, 3D files, materials, images, videos, and so on. You can select which types to see. The first three are required, but you can change the rest depending on your personal preferences and needs. A shortcut that you should remember is Control and the left mouse button. It will turn on the filter you are hovering and turn off the rest. Repeating it will turn everything back on. If the asset view is a place of magic, the productivity panel is a witchcraft lab. You will find a bunch of features that will help you organize all of your assets. First up is the Tags tab. It may sound self-explanatory, but in Connector, the tags are a bit more complex and extremely powerful. Unlike other solutions, you can create hierarchical structures of tags, trees of tags, subtags, and sub-subtags. You can assign the assets to multiple different tags and then use a combination of them to narrow down your selections. There are a few different ways to assign tags, like dragging and dropping the asset to it, or using the dedicated tool for searching and creation on the fly. Just like the folders, you can color code your tags, but you can go even further and add icons. The tags and their looks are shared with everyone who will access the connector workspace. The second tab is Workflows, a power user feature that works in tandem with the integrated version control. You can create your own workflows that match the different stages of your creative pipeline. They will appear in this tab and help with the quick filtering of the assets that are currently used in the different stages of your projects. Assigning workflows is pretty similar to the tags. You can do it with drag and drop or through a dedicated interface. An asset can be only in one stage of certain workflow at a time. Collections is another power user feature, which acts as favorites on steroids. Each team member can create their own selections of assets that they prefer or need for a certain task. The collections can be organized in hierarchical structures, similar to the tags. The difference is that they aren't shared with the rest of the team. The Dynamic Sets tab gives you the ability to save the current state of the searches and filters and recall them at a later date. You can think of it as a shortcut to a certain combination of options. The great thing about the dynamic sets is that they won't just show what you have picked at the moment. They will show you all of the new assets added to the library that fit the criteria that you have saved. Like the collections, the dynamic sets are personal. Next up is another power user feature, the collaborative ratings. They give a chance to the team members to express their opinions about the assets with a couple of clicks. There are three criteria that you can use, stars, likes, and approvals. Depending on your needs, you can just stick to one of the systems or combine them. The rated assets will display their cumulative rating on the thumbnail, and it can also be used for quick filtering, so the team will know exactly which assets to use or avoid. Talking of filtering, meet the secondary filters. Their main purpose is to act on the metadata that's assigned to the assets and narrow down the asset view. Under the filters, you will see the amount of assets that fit the criteria. Clicking the secondary filter one time will activate it, and you will see all assets. A second click will turn the icon red, which means that the asset view will show assets that don't fit the criteria. You can combine multiple different secondary filters with the icon at the right end. For some filters, like tags and ratings, you can select an option from a dropdown. It's quite useful for filtering only the assets with four stars. It takes a click. The PBR Materials Mixer is one of the several connector features that allows you to preview materials before using them. As its name suggests, this panel is for PBR textures. You can just grab a bunch and drop them, and they will be assigned to the relevant slots based on their names. You can also load individual maps and inspect them in the interactive preview. 
The previews panel changes its appearance and features based on the assets that you have selected. You have the option to open this panel in vertical and horizontal mode. For example, you can explore an interactive preview of popular file formats like OBJ and FBX. Or look inside the textures that are used in a 3DS Max asset. Or see the metadata and families hidden within Revit assets. The substance materials have an even better support. Connector allows you to play with their presets and properties. Then, you can export them as PBR textures. Let's go down to the Details panel. Here, you can find more information about the selected asset and its properties. This panel also gives you the chance to write descriptions and assign custom properties. The details depend on the asset type. For example, you can see how many vertices are in a 3DS Max file or the UU asset properties of a CUAP. Last on our list of panels is the Products panel. It's created with the Design Connected users in mind. You can log in with your Design Connected account, and the panel will display all products that you have purchased or downloaded. You can navigate using the categories from the website or search within the panel. A background process within Connector will try to match the Design Connected products with the assets within your folders. The match files can then be found through the Products panel. At the top is the menu bar, with drop-down filled with useful features. Probably the most interesting are the tools. The top six options allow you to apply batch actions to your assets, like renaming or assigning custom previews. The next three open queues, so you can observe the progress of different processes. After that, we have a set of system tools that are mostly for power user features, like web catalogs, and shared content metadata. These options won't appear in personal and shared workspaces. The integrations dropdown will help you install the specific plugins and add-ons. The settings are self-explanatory. You can adjust some of the preferences and the asset types, as we already showed. The window dropdown is where you command the different panels, and the help is used for reporting problems and sharing feedback with the support team. With that, we have completed an extensive overview of Connector's user interface. Dig into our channel or help center for more information about each feature. And of course, don't forget to follow us for more tips and guides about Connector.